The day marked the first day for the Judicial Service Commission interviews to fill uh, two constitutional court vacancies and others uh, in the High Court. Chief Justice Raymond Zonda is chairing the proceedings and has promised that uh, all their candidates will be treated with dignity and respect. Let's explore these developments uh, with legal expert now, Michael Begrain, who, who joins me from Cape Town via video link. Michael, good to have you with us tonight and thank you very much uh, for coming on. Uh, the chair of the JSC, also the incoming uh, 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 Chief Justice in his uh, uh, first, uh, uh, I suppose, couple of days in office. He made the, the remarks to say he, he, he wants to outline, I suppose, what characterized their meeting as the commission, uh, which he calls was fruitful and constructive. He says there was a complete acceptance from the commissioners, uh, without exception, that we intend to, 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 to treat all candidates with respect and courtesy and with due regard to their human dignity, and will simply try to establish what we need to establish in order to perform our functions uh, to advise the president uh, on who to appoint. Does this represent a, a turning point, I suppose, from the JSC that we saw uh, in the previous interviews? Absolutely, and thank you for having me on air. I think this is absolutely fantastic. It's a breath of fresh air. Um, what uh, Justice Raymond Zondo did was he actually put the game plan together straight away um, and, and called the shots. Um, we have got to have, as South Africans, we've got to have an enormous respect for the man because um, he obviously, I mean, he lived through the last one. We as South Africans uh, cringed when we saw the last one. Um, I, as a lawyer, felt embarrassed, quite frankly, uh, the last time. This time, it is absolutely different. We can be proud. We, one thing I can tell you right now is that the judiciary in South Africa is good. They're absolutely solid. Yes, we've had failure from government from literally all the departments. And yes, we've had failure from a lot of our economy. But our judiciary is solid. We have a legal system which is held together. I don't know how, but they've held together. They've um, been fit for purpose. They've had um, a really good, solid ability to speak truth to power. Um, and we've kept the rule of law going in this country. And, and it's, it's miraculous and it's fantastic. And we need to applaud all of those that sit on the bench right through, right from the Constitutional Court down to the Magistrates' Courts. Yeah. And I think what Zondo's done, what Judge Zondo's done, is he's now bringing it back to not to be a circus, to be, look at this, we need people who are fit for purpose, and he's doing that. Yeah. He's making sure that we get people who are solid. That question of fit for purpose, of course, is one that is uh, debated, particularly when it comes to these interviews. Others saying you need mm. to straddle that fine line of uh, being robust, having robust uh, d discussions and asking hard questions that sometimes would, 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 would make the candidates uncomfortable. But uh, also being, being able, as we put it now, to, 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 to respect and protect their dignity. Um, how, how, how do we straddle, straddle that line uh, without, as you put it, turning into, into a circus? Well, I think Justice Onda is actually calling the shots there, and he's making sure that people are treated as human beings, first of all, because last time we didn't see that, and that the questions are relevant. Absolutely relevant. Yes, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes a judge has made a terrible mistake or in their personal life something's gone wrong. Um, and we, we do need to talk about it because obviously that's going to affect their judgment in due course. And if someone um, might have a particular peculiarity, uh, we need to actually tackle it. So you can't tiptoe through this process because once you've appointed a judge, it's very difficult, as you've seen, to get a judge uh, taken out of office. It's, it's almost impossible. And so when you're choosing people, and especially in the Constitutional Court, which is the highest court in the land, um, they, they're making law and also they're setting the tone for the entire society. So you do need to be harsh in certain circumstances, but you don't need to be rude. You don't need to attack something uh, really silly. I mean, look, you remember that remark to Justice Meyer um, where uh, one of the questions, I will rather not say who, said, oh, we spent the night together. 
that, that's really not called for. It doesn't add to the process. It embarrasses the justice, and it embarrasses all of us that are watching this. Um, and, and we're not going to have it. I, I presume we won't have it this time. Um, and you've got to rule this process with a fist. Um, you can't expect people to go off on a tangent and gratuitously at, attack someone. Uh, it really is not nice. And even Judge Zondo himself was attacked in the last in the last session. Um, I think, quite frankly, all of us, and I speak for literally hundreds and hundreds of people who were watching, we, we all had red faces. We, we were embarrassed about this. It, yeah. it was terrible. Judges Matters has uh, uh, suggested three reforms that they think would be quite critical here. One would be a written criteria uh, of how these interviews would be conducted, uh, a code of conduct for the commissioners, and clear rules of, of procedure. you think these would be helpful? They would. you just got to be careful that you don't curtail, and you said it earlier. You don't want to curtail the process. You don't want to clip my wings if I'm one of the people, as, as a commissioner, asking questions. Um, I want to feel free that I can ask questions that are bothering me um, that I think might influence uh, my decision at the end of the day. Um, and so you don't want to have rules that are hard and fast. I, I think that the real secret in this is that you've got to have a person sharing it, and you've got to have a person who's respected, understood, and followed. In other words, people don't just run roughshod over the, the chairperson. And, and you've seen now we've had a taste of uh, Joe Zonda. As the idea. And he does it with humility, um, the most unbelievably pleasant person. And yet you know there's an iron rod there. Um, he can smile, and, and you know there's an iron rod. I know Justice Zonda well because he comes from the labor law background is where I practice. Um, and he was always a superb job, judge, but he never made anyone feel terrible. If I was losing a case, he didn't put me down. He explained to me why he didn't agree with me, and I never, ever took that on appeal because that's a man you can respect. That's yeah. a man that makes you fall into place. But, Michael, there are those within the JSC particularly who had this feeling, and maybe some are still there, that the wheels of um, transformation, uh, right, or going towards transformation mm. were, were grinding to a halt. And, and therefore, they, they took this position of taking some active uh, activism towards this, this, this transformation. How do, how, do we, how, do we, how do we strike that balance that this institution is pushed towards a degree of transformation? Well, it's quite simple. I think everyone agrees that we're going to need people um, to come in uh, of, of a specific gender. We need women. We need black judges. We need to reflect society as well. And I think everyone on the commission understands that society, when they want to build up trust in the judiciary, they, they don't want to see... Um, and let's call a spade a spade. They don't want to see only white males sitting there, which is the history that we come from. Uh, we want to see the mix. We want to see society reflected. Um, and I think that's important, and I think everyone understands that. That being said, you can't make it the sole and, prior and uh, the, the major criteria. You first need people. The first thing is you need people that are fit for purpose. If we know that we've got a good judge, and you've got two equal people, one is male and one is female, and we need more females on the bench, well, then that's what we will do. We will look at the female first and foremost, as long as that person is fit for purpose and as long as that person is equal or better than the male that is standing there. So if it's equal, then obviously you try and, uh, you try and fit in, and we want to reflect our society that we live in. Um, and the, the judiciary is getting there. I think they... They've, they've done a jolly good job in making sure that we have a reflection of our society. Um, yes, there are other many parts of the society that don't reflect it, yeah. uh, but I think they, they're actually holding their head up high and they are doing that. And I think at the end of the day, everyone understands that and everyone understands that we can't have a person sitting there just because they happen to be female. That, that's not the case. And like we have great candidates... You would then judge the candidate and add that in as part of the merits of, of choosing the person. Um, I, you know, we, we don't have fools sitting as commissioners. 
We have people that actually understand what is needed yeah. in the legal profession. Michael Bagram, appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on tonight. Legal expert there, Michael Bagram.